2000 into 2019, if you have something you can look back on in 2018 and know that God was in it and God did something great, let's just give him a round of applause and thank him for that, okay? But, but if at the same time you can look forward to 2019 and know the God who was with you in 2018 is also going to be there in 2019 and he's going to do great things, let's give him a hand for that, all right? Very cool. Good deal. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes, grab a pen. What you're going to notice as you grab those notes is on that sheet of paper where it says notes, there are actually no notes, okay? Um, what does that mean? It means it's going to be a really quick sermon today, all right? Nah, maybe not, maybe not. But uh, that means that I want you to write some things down exclusive to you this morning where it says notes. And so get ready with that pen to write a few things down. You know, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Um, I might give a message, I might give a sermon, and, uh, and there's somebody who's sitting out there when they're hearing the message, they're going, oh man, so-and-so really needed this message. And so often we point to the other person and we don't think so much about ourselves. This morning, I want you to think about you and between you and your relationship with God, exclusively you. What that means is when somebody's writing on their sheet next to you, don't peek, okay? Don't look at what they're writing down. Just focus on yours alone, all right? We're in a series. The name of the series is called Christmas Stolen. And uh, we are actually past Christmas, but here's the deal. In this series, as we wrap it up, you guys know if you're here, Christmas Stolen was about, yeah, at times we find that our joy is stolen away, at times we find that our peace can be stolen away, even our faith at times is stolen away from this. All these things can be stolen away, but we realize that Christ is the one that can bring that peace and that joy. Here's the deal today. Instead of things that get stolen away from us, we're going to focus on things in our life that we wish would get stolen away from us, okay? Some of those things that we're going, I just would rather not have this in 2019. I'd rather leave this behind in 2018 as we transition into 2019. God, if you will, please take these very things out of my life. And so that's what we're going to look at here this morning. So you guys with me on that? All right, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning as we, uh, as we come before you, I, um, I once again, I, I pray that, that by your spirit you would expose each of our hearts to each one of us, that you would point out those things inside of us that shouldn't be there those things that hurt our hearts, those things that can do damage in our lives. And that we would be the people this morning who listen to your Spirit's prompting. That we wouldn't try to ignore it. Uh, the, we wouldn't try to pretend it's not there. We wouldn't try to hide it still. But that we would realize the damage that these things are doing and allow you through your power and your strength to take these things, to remove these things so that we can walk in the life that honors and pleases you, real life, true life, meaningful life. Help us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, if you uh, 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 just uh, released a book called Restoration, some of you have picked that up and you started reading, and, and you're going to recognize uh, what I'm about to tell you. If you read the first part of that book, it was several years ago that, uh, that my son Chase decided he wanted to buy a house. And so he went looking, I think it was, the app is Zillow, one of the Zillow things lets you do that. And he went looking there and was looking all around for a house that he wanted to buy. And and, uh, and I remember when he said, hey, I found this one particular house. I want you and mom to come and check it out with me. We'll do a walkthrough of the place. And so uh, we went with great anticipation to see this house that he had chosen. Some of you kind of know the area. It's in Hapeville, and, and it's just uh, right back behind the old dwarf house in that general area. And so we went with him over to this house, and, and we got out of the truck after we pulled up there in front of it. And we began to walk into the house, and it was the moment that we walked into the house that, that uh, we were like, 
oh no. Well, we didn't say that. In fact, we're walking through the house and looking around at this house and we're like, but the whole time we're going, oh, this looks rough. I mean, it, it, the house, I think, was built maybe in 1944 or 45, somewhere in that time frame. And the house looked like nobody had done anything to it in all those years. Uh, it, was, it was a mess, not to men- mention the, the, the garbage that had piled up and the filth all around this house. It was just, it was overwhelming to us. But nevertheless, we, we did our best uh, walking through. Chase was really excited about it. He saw something that we didn't quite see. But we're walking through, and we, we point to this, and we're like, oh, look at that. That's nice. And oh, yeah, cool. And all through the house. And, but then after we got done and we walked out of the house, we went and got back into the truck. And I, I knew, here it comes. Here it comes. As soon as I pulled away so Chase couldn't see her anymore, big tears started coming down my wife's eyes. And she said next, I can't let my baby live in that. I could feel her. I knew. I could see it. Well, I began to try to talk her down from the ledge, you know. And I tried to convince her, you know what, I'm going to help him. I'm going I'm to, with all my handyman skills that I have, I'm going to try to figure things out and get in there and, and work. And don't worry, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. He bought the house. And, and sure enough, we as a whole family jumped in there. And, and uh, I was in there trying to uh, hammer stuff that I probably shouldn't have hammered. And, and Kim's in there and she's cleaning and Madison's in there uh, carrying stuff. I mean, just all of us, all hands on deck working to, to fix this house. It, you couldn't have, I couldn't even describe some of the, uh, what we saw. There was one point where the, the whole floor was caving in because it had rotted out. And so I'm, I'm getting all the rotted wood out. And then underneath the house, there's actually a dead rat, you know, and it, you're just going, oh my goodness. But you know what? You know what? Little by little, it started to get better. We would take the old out and replace it with the new. And wouldn't you know that before long, we all walked into that house and we're looking around going, wow, this is pretty nice. This is all right. Way to go, man. This is really, the old became the new. The reason I'm telling you that is because I believe that God wants to do the same thing with each one of us, if we'll let him. You see, some of us can look back at 2018 and we can go, man, what a mess. Look at all the garbage back there. Look at all the junk. What a disaster it was. Look at all the filth. Nevertheless, we have a God who can take all our garbage, who can take all our junk and begin to make it new. A new you. That's what we find right here in Scripture. And I want to I point this passage out to you. It's found in 2 Corinthians, starting in the, chapter 5, starting in verse 14. And here's what it says. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old self. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. So, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means, and get this, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Now, I love some translations say, has become a new creature or a new creation, has become a brand new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Wait a second, you know who it's good news for? It's good news for all of us who can look back at 2018 saying, what a disaster. What a mess. Because he promises something new for those in Christ. I want you to do something right quick. Put your pen down, if you will. Put your pen down. Take your right hand and do this. 
And this, you know what this is? This is, we're saying goodbye to 2018, man. Wait, 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 keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Now, you know what this is? We're saying hello to 2019 where God's going to do something great if we let him in each one of our lives. Well, that's the question. Will you, will you allow him? Will you allow him to come in and get you? To begin to clean out the junk that shouldn't be there. The stuff that's destroying you. I've got several things. I'm, I'm going I'm to say the word. and you, I don't care if you write down the word. But I, instead, this morning of writing down the word, in that spot, I want you to begin to write down specifically, specifically, those very things in your life. Will you do that? All right, so let's begin. These are the things we're going to choose to let go of, the old of 2018. The first thing I want you to write down are the hurts, the hurts. Maybe the wounds from the past. Maybe some of you, they're so painful that you, you can't even hardly, uh, you don't want to put that name down even. It's maybe just putting initials or something. Somebody maybe wounded you in your past. Maybe there's a hurt from back then. Maybe, maybe somebody did something absolutely awful and terrible. And you've been carrying that around with you maybe for years or even most of your life. You got any wounds? Maybe it was from a family member. Maybe it was from a friend. Maybe it was from some even stranger. Who knows? Can you think of any wounds? Can you think of any hurts? Truth is, we all have wounds. We all have hurts. We all have those wounds that if, if they're not dealt with, they continue to fester year after year after year. They never seem to heal. It's always just kind of right there with us. Maybe it's caused this root out of that wound that's grown up into bitterness and that bitterness begins to strangle you and begins to, uh, has this chokehold on you to where, where at times even the people that you love the most you find yourself angry at, blowing up because, well, you could trace it back to a wound, to a hurt that has consumed you for so very long. Let me ask real quick, how many of you got, um, raise your hand to this, how many of you got uh, the, uh, all the, all the Christmas presents you wanted this year. Is that it? Yes. Some of you have some lousy family, man. So, <laughs> no, I'm just teasing, messing with that. Now, how about this? How many of you got some really good gifts this year? Good gifts this year. Okay. Got some good gifts. Okay. Well, well, well here's the deal. Right now, I want you to give yourself the absolute best gift you could give this Christmas. You know what it is? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. I want you to forgive those who cause those hurts. Oh, I know. I know what you're saying. I know the argument. I, Bro, you don't, you don't know what they did. You, you don't know how painful it was. You can't imagine how, how awful and terrible. Or uh, if I forgive, then they're just gonna, they're gonna get away with it. They're gonna get let off. I know, I know all those. And the truth is, I don't know how you feel. I don't know how any other person in here feels regarding the wounds that you have suffered throughout your life. I don't know. And listen, you don't know my wounds. In fact, none of us knows each other's wounds. Nevertheless, there are all these wounds there. However, the forgiveness will set you free. The forgiveness will set you free. Some of you even need to forgive yourself. Here's a story Jesus tells. It really, if we get it, it, it puts everything in perspective in a, in a very unique way. The, the story is, uh, there was this king, Jesus said. And this king had this, had this man who owed him a lot of money. I mean, we're talking millions. 
And one day the king called in the debt of this man and, and the man couldn't pay it and he knew he couldn't pay it. And so he goes before the king and he's scared out of his mind. And he begs the king, he says, you know, I cannot pay this. It's way too much. And I know you can do whatever you want to with me. I mean, the king had the right to put him into debtor's prison. He could even put his whole family in debtor's prison with him. I mean, the king could even kill him. But here is this man with no hope whatsoever as he goes, and he pleads before the king, please, oh, please, you know I can't pay you back. And with that, Jesus said, the king looks at him, he goes, I know you can't pay me. And I'm going to choose to wipe away all your debt. You're free to go. Well, you can imagine the man's ecstatic with, the, with that news. Uh, suddenly, he had all this debt that he could not pay, and he was looking, and, and he's free. And so he basically skips out of the palace, thrilled and excited that he has now found this amazing freedom from that debt. But as he's going down the palace steps, he happens to run into this man that he recognized. You! <laughs> you! Don't you remember? You owe me 300 bucks. You better pay up now. And the guy says, man, I, I don't have it. I can't do it. And with that, he said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you in, in prison. I'm going to put you in prison and your whole family in prison because you haven't paid me back. Well, well, there happened to be somebody nearby who heard everything that happened. And he quickly goes to the king and says, you're not going to believe that guy that you just forgave his debt of millions, turned around and put this poor man and his entire family in prison over a few hundred bucks. And with that, the king bring him back in and says, how dare you? How dare you? I forgave you of all of this, and still, you wouldn't forgive this. You know, Jesus makes a point, doesn't he? But so often we don't see that point. We, we focus on, but this is my hurt, and this is what this person did, and they owe me, and if I forgive them, I'm, I'm letting them go. No, they need to pay. They need to pay. And before God... He goes, really? I have forgiven you of everything so that you can live. Oh, that we would forgive. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another just as just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you, has forgiven you, has forgiven me. Has God's Spirit maybe spoken to you a name, a person, a hurt? He's saying, finally, please, don't take this into 2019. You've carried it way too long. Forgive. Forgive. Dylan Roof. You probably know that name, right? The young man who went into the church in Charleston, South Carolina. Emmanuel. Methodist Episcopalian Church and killed nine people having a Bible study. And I remember, I remember watching the news coverage when that happened and uh, there was this one point where all the, the surviving family members get to say something over a video camera to Dylan Roof. And I don't know if, if you saw it or were as blown away by it as I was, but family member after family member said, 
I forgive you. I forgive you. They did a follow-up piece on this just the other day, and I, I was watching that as well. And you kind of wonder how it's gone and how it's played out. And they, they asked again, have you forgiven? And again, the wife of the pastor said, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. It hurts knowing that my two girls aren't going to be able to go to the father-daughter dance. It hurts. But he told us to forgive. And so I choose to forgive. Will you? Or will you simply carry it into 2019? Now, please, take a minute. Write down the names or the initials, the hurts on that piece of paper. Today, I choose to let go of old hurts. The second thing I want you to write down. Today, I choose to let go of old habits. Habits. Are there any habits that maybe you've been holding on to year after year after year? Anything that, well, they've been with you so long it almost feels like it's a part of you. It's who I am. Any habits? I, uh, Christmas Eve, great service. It was fun. I hope you were able to make it, but uh, Christmas Eve service, uh, I, I walked out as soon as I was done speaking. I'm walking along this back hallway here and out these doors, doors suddenly swing open. And I see this young man I've known for a long time. Young man comes through the door. I hadn't seen him for a while, but I was happy to see him. But he comes through the door and immediately comes right up to me and wraps his arm around me like this and just gets right, right in my face, you know, right there. A little too close, you know. <laughs> but there he is. He's right there. I, I've known his history. I know what, what he's been battling with. I've seen the struggles time and time again. And he looks at me and he goes, you're right. You're right. It's enough. It's over. It's got to be over. And I said, man, I know. It does. It does. Because it's killing you. It's killing you. And he goes, yeah, it's killing me. Not only is it killing him, it's killing his family. Now, day after day, that's what they do. They try to think, if we do this, if we do this, maybe finally this will help him, it'll break it. Always on this roller coaster ride. I, I prayed with him and encouraged him. I said, yeah, it's got to be. It's because it's over. It, it's killing you, man. It's killing you. And, and that's one of the things to realize that it's killing you. That habit. How it destroys your life and the lives of those around you. I want you to imagine that the doctor, you visit him today, and the doctor comes in and says, I've got some news, it's not good. But you have this disease, and it's sure to kill you, and you say, well, how long do I got? And the doctor says, you have one day. One day? Yeah, only one day. He goes, that's the bad news, but let me give you the good news. You see, even though you have this disease and it will kill you within one day, the good news is I have a pill. And this pill, if you are sure to take this pill in the morning, it will give you one more day. Here's the catch, though. You have to keep coming back to me to get another pill each day. That's the news. Now, suppose that were true for you and that was told to you today. What would you do day after day? I know you would, you'd be knocking on the doctor's door. Hey, man, you in there? Because he's got what gives you life for yet another day. Could you imagine anybody so silly as to go, you know what? Oh, I'm a little busy today. I don't know if I'm going to make it over to the doctor. No, man, that'd be foolish. Are you kidding me? 
That's where your life is at. Or in the same way, I want you to understand, so many of us, we have these habits, these addictions, and they're killing us. One day from now, five days, five years, who knows, but they're killing you. They're killing you. But the good news, there's somebody who can heal you. But you have to go to him each day. You have to trust in him each day. I, I know, I know, we're kind of this culture where we're like, yeah, uh, you know what? I got some willpower. I'm going to really work on it. Willpower is going to get me over it now. We grit our teeth this way. We try a little, uh, no. We need something more. We need something stronger. We need what is found right here in Scripture. The same resurrection power that is in Jesus Christ, he says, is in you. Any man in Christ is what? A new creature. The old has passed away. All things have become new. New. I love uh, Richard Overton. Did you see that? How many of you know who I'm talking about? Richard Overton? I bet, I bet you'll know now. He, he, he passed away just this last week, but he is the oldest living World War II veteran who lived to 112 years old. And of course, everybody wants to know a secret, right? And so there are all these interviews going on with Richard. Everybody's, well, how'd you do it, man? What's going on? Here's, here's just one of the things Richard said. He goes, I'd ask them to stay busy and talk to the Lord and live with the Lord. Don't live with people. I like that right there. <laughs> he says, live with the Lord. Let him take care of you. And then I, I, I heard another interviewer talking to him, and, and this interviewer said to him, you ever think about dying? Which I think is a terrible question to ask somebody, you know? It's like, but you know what Richard said? He goes, I don't think about dying. I'm gonna, death comes whether you think about it or not. He goes, but I think about living. Living each and every day. Oh, I love that. But that's, that's you and me. That's what we've been called to. You've been given life. The old has become new, a brand new person. And to go to the Lord each and every day saying, I need you, I need you, I need you. I've got this I've been dealing with. I've got this I've been dealing with. I've been struggling with this in my life and it's gotten a hold on me, but it's by your power and your strength, the old can become new. I can become a brand new person. That habit can, can be so, oh, 2018 but I'm stepping into the new. Take a minute and write down. Don't, don't look at anybody else's paper. Take a minute and write down. Is there any habits, addiction that you need to leave in 2018? I, I, can, I can help and list some of these. Drugs. Is there, is there a, 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 a pill? Alcohol. Sex. Pornography. Oh man, that, that, that thing that you think you're doing in secret, it's not in secret. Think it's hurting nobody? No, oh, think again. I've seen household, family, family after family torn apart. It's killing you, man. It's killing you. How about worry? Have you worried so much it's just become a part of who you are? How about food? How about that relationship that's so toxic. No, there's, there's so many, but what are yours? You have anything? Can we be so honest with ourselves? Quit trying to pretend, quit trying to hide. The habits. And then today I choose to let go of old Last one, then we'll get out of here. Thinking, thinking, our thoughts. 
your old way of thinking. And maybe it was, it was something that was said to you when you were younger and, and you just still hear that voice in your mind time and time again. You're worthless. You'll never be able to. Or maybe you get up and you look at yourself every morning. I hate myself. I hate the way I look. The scripture tells us as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And some of us, we're our own worst enemies. We've been telling ourselves the lies for so long, we don't know to tell ourselves anything different. We tell ourselves those lies and we believe those lies. We then live out those lies. And we just sing a song, but you say, oh, but you say that I am. That we would instead listen to what he says. The old becoming new. You see, what we think about ourselves changes how we walk, how we live, how we act each and every day. Let me ask a little, little game, okay? A little game with you. Um, raise your hand if you're a dog person. All right, raise your hand if you're a cat person. Yeah, all the weirdos, right? Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just messing with you, man. I'm just messing with you. Gosh, some of y'all are so sensitive. Okay, how about this? Um, raise your hand if uh, you're, you like Coca-Cola, Pepsi. Yeah, all the transplants. Yeah. Yeah, good okay, here's another one. How about this? Uh, raise your hand if you um, eat peanut butter and banana on a sandwich. Seriously? Like, uh. All right, all, all of us sane ones who don't, raise your hand, you know, it's like, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Okay, how about this one, one more. Uh, raise your hand if you are glass half empty Some of you are like, you know you are, man. You know you are. <laughs> all right, all right. Glass half full. Yeah. Listen, listen. When you believe 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17, and really get it, really get it, you will find yourself the eternal optimist. You will find yourself that even in 2019, if your glass is completely empty, you're going to be going, my cup runneth over. Why? Because you know him. You know him. And you know who you are in him. And that makes all the difference in the world. When you really know that, when you really believe your identity in Jesus Christ, it changes everything. It changes how you see yourself. It changes how you talk. It changes how you walk, how you live out your life day after day after day. Do you know that? I've I've used this before. I'm I'm just going to do it again because it shows, it illustrates the point. But but just real quick... um, I, uh, several years ago, uh, I went to eat at Wendy's and I went at lunchtime, walked into Wendy's and there's this line, you know how those lines do, like they're in the Wendy's and then empties out to where the cash register is. And so I got in this little corral line and, and I'm standing there and just kind of waiting, uh, whatever. And, but, but then I start to notice, man, this is, this is slow. This is a really slow Wendy's line. I, it seems like nobody's moving here. It seems like it's taking way too long. And, you know, the hanger starts to kick in a little bit, right? And it starts to get the better of you. And, and have you ever noticed that when you are in a situation like that with other people, then in that misery, you and those other people start to bond, right? There's a bonding that starts to happen. And that's what's happening to me and all the people around me in this Wendy's line. We're starting to look around like, oh, that's ridiculous. 
making comments to each other. Lady in front of me turns around and she goes, oh, could it get any longer? I'm like, no. <laughs> and then you, you make silly jokes like uh, somebody must have ordered fries or something, <laughs> threw them all off. <laughs> so this is all going on in our line, right? This is all happening in the Wendy's line right there. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking to me, in my mind, what I'm going to do is, is when I get up there, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything, but, but uh, th this lady at the register, she's going to know, she's going to know that I'm highly irritated. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show her. And, and, and so that's what happens. Suddenly it's my turn and I get up there and, and I'm standing there like, And that's when, that's when she has been working on her cash register. Suddenly she looks up at me, and when she does, she goes, Pastor Bo! <laughs> and I go from... And she's sweetest teenage girl. She goes, oh my goodness. She goes, I'm so sorry this line is long. She goes, I'm brand new and I'm trying to learn what to do. And, and I'm like, <laughs> you're doing good. Good job. No, man. But what, what surprised me the most out of all that is how quickly I was able to go from being jerk to pastor, <laughs> you know? And it was all because she said, Pastor Bo, instantly, pastors shouldn't be jerks. I'm a pastor. By the way, you guys have a jerk for a pastor, all right? <laughs> all right. But you see, you do the same thing when you realize who you are, that changes everything. You step into, you begin to live out, you begin to walk in who you really are. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So here we are guys, you got hurts, you got the habits written down. Is there any uh, old, thinking that you need to jot down as well. Just do it real quick. Do it real quick. Any old thoughts that you've been carrying over from year to year that you need to change, you need to let go of. Why? Because I don't, I, 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 want, here's the, I don't want you to miss garbage pickup, okay? We hauled out so much garbage from Chase's house. Today, we're going to haul out a whole lot more. We're not going to carry it over in 2018. So, Take that sheet of paper, and if you're with me today, rip it up. Yeah, just go ahead and rip it up. Because look what I got. And this is going to cement in our minds. We're not going to carry it out of here. I know some of you, oh, you're like, oh, man, I don't know. Nah, let's rip it up. Let's let it go. Rip it up. There you go. All right. And I'm ready. Whoever's ready, come on down. We're going we're gonna to dump the garbage today, okay? Some of you from the balcony might have to run. Oh, we got Pete up there. We got Pete. Good deal. Don't you dare carry it over into 19, man. Come on, y'all. Hurry up. We don't got a day. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Peanut butter on the <laughs> banana. It's good. Do you hear that? I just got I just got schooled. She said I should try peanut butter and bananas on my sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. 
<laughs> Man, it's getting heavy. Awesome, buddy. Let's see, man. All right, all right, all right. Last chance. Come on. Don't take it at 18. I'm mean 19. Come on, come on. Let's see, buddy. All right. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple more. All right, this is it. Last chance. Anybody? Anybody? Thank you so much, but I want to keep mine for notes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good deal. All right. Good deal. Now that I have everybody's secrets right here. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. No, nah, just messing with you. Guys, this is going to go in the garbage. But it going in the garbage, what does that mean? It means you don't get to carry it out of here. You don't get to carry it anymore. You've given it to the Lord. Let's leave it in his hands, right? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are a God who has set us free. We thank you that we can bring all of these things to you. You know our hearts. Give us the power. Give us the strength, Father, to walk in your way in 2019. Help us, help us to be the people that you want us to be for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.